special. Village Council meeting Monday, November 29th, 2021 at 6.30 p.m. This is uh, as a result of the cancellation or the adjournment of the November 22nd meeting due to lack of quorum. We'll call the meeting to order. And if you could rise for Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. If we could have a roll call, Mr. Young, yes. and determination of quorum. Yes. Councilmember Hobbs. Here. Councilmember Lamb. Here. Councilmember Luxinger. Here. Councilmember Matheson. Here. President Pro Tem Narsh. Here. Councilmember Teresa Rutt is on her way. Uh, President Van Portfeet is mm. excused. So we have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, item number four, statement. Uh, for the purpose of the meeting. The purpose of the special meeting is a rescheduled meeting from November 22nd, 2021, canceled due to a lack of quorum. Uh, presentations, we had a presentation this evening, but our D DDA director, Molly Lalone, was unable to attend. Uh, and I think it's consensus of council and manager to adjourn that presentation uh, until it's uh, the next meeting. I actually wanted to make a couple of comments on the presentation that was submitted in my packet, if it's possible. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Okay. Um, the first comment is, there's too many pages in my packet of colored, expensive colored uh, stuff that could have been presented. The entire presentation could have been presented on two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. Could you speak into the microphone a little better, please? Uh, the, the entire presentation could have been, it's the same problem I have with McKenna, the, the entire presentation could have been submitted on two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. Um, I'm not sure what the presentation is, is supposed to be um, presenting. There are many things in the presentation that look like things that the DDA has done, but they're really not. They're a report on things that have occurred in the main downtown area and not as a consequence of the DDA. Um, that's all I have to say on that particular report. All right, thank you. And, and of course, the purpose of the uh, annual presentation is the state requires that the DDA uh, hold two informal meetings annually. Um, so it is a state requirement that, that those meetings be held. Uh, and the purpose of that, of course, is to inform the public of the goals and direction of the authority, including projects to be undertaken. So um, we can still make that with uh, the next meeting. Sure. Okay. Uh, call to the public. If there's anyone from the public. Uh, I don't know if any letters have come in, uh, Mr. Young, on a non-agenda item. If none, we'll close the call to the public. Uh, consent agenda, all items on the consent agenda are approved by one vote. Uh, I will read the items to be considered on the consent agenda. Number one, approval of permit and license agreement for 2022 Rotary Ice Cup Challenge event. Number two, SEMCOG annual membership renewal 2021-2022. Item three, schedule the CDG, CDBG uh, PY 2022 public hearing. Item four, schedule public hearing on proposed ordinance number 26-104, planned unit development PUD text amendments. Item five, schedule public hearing for 141 Elizabeth Street Apartments preliminary PUD plan. Item six, Adopt resolution setting 2022 Village Council meeting schedule. Item seven, DDA Executive Director Report October 2021. Item eight, approval of Village Council regular meeting minutes November 8th, 2021. Item nine, Planning Commission regular meeting minutes October 4th, 2021. Item 10, Planning Commission draft regular meeting minutes November 1st, 2021. Item 11, 
Downtown Development Authority regular meeting minutes, November 12th, 2021. Item 12, Downtown Development Authority special meeting minutes, October 28th, 2021. And item 13, Police Department reports, October. And uh, if we have a motion. Uh, yeah, I move to, uh, I ask to remove items 7, 8, and 11 from the consent agenda for discussion. Okay, if we can get a motion to support. Support. All in favor? Is that Teresa or oh, okay. Sarah? Okay, sorry. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we'll move item seven to number nine, agenda items from consideration. Let's make item seven uh, A. Item eight will be B. Item C will be 11. Financial matters will be item uh, D and other items E. Uh, Mr. Lamb. Do you want to roll call on uh, uh, consent or all eyes with yeah. the motion? We get a motion uh, for the agenda as amended. Move to move to approve the agenda as amended. The support. Oh, excuse me. There was one issue that Joe was supposed to bring up: um, the invoice register and bill approval. The portion of that in the agenda, I'm sorry, it's an agenda yes. item. The DDA, at one of the previous meetings, we agreed that the DDA bills, we would not be approving them as part of our agenda. We would only be receiving and file them. And Joe forgot has included them in this section of the agenda. Would you like to address that? Well, and I, I just wanted to make sure, I think the discussion on that was that exactly, but whether or not that the council is required. We just receive and file it. And that's further on in the agenda. Right now we're on consent agenda. Okay, so it's not it's part of the agenda. Not this. Okay, I'm Right sorry. now we, we, we pulled items off the agenda, made a motion to approve. Now we need to approve the consent agenda as amended. And Doug made a motion and I didn't catch who made second. Anyone? Mike? Second. Mike, Council Member Lamb. Okay. And okay, we have a motion. We have a second for the approval of the agenda as amended. Everyone in support say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, number nine agenda items for consideration. Well, a. Well, we, got to, we, got to, we just approved the consent agenda. Now we need to approve the regular agenda. That was a motion to approve the agenda. The, uh, Mr. Lamb's motion oh, was okay. to approve the consent agenda. Okay, without after, those. Okay, after my pulling confusion. the. I'm sorry. Three. Right, so the, okay, so it was through the amended agenda. I got it. And now the approval of the agenda is complete. Item nine. Right. A will be item seven. DDA Executive Director Report, October 21. Mr. Lamb. Well, I'm sorry. I, don't, I didn't write those down. Which one is up? Seven. It's seven. Seven. The, the DDA Director's Report. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Um, I would, I would like to move to send this report back to the DDA director uh, so they could write something um, professional and factual. I, can, I can't understand any of it. It's a bunch of pictures uh, with miscellaneous things written on the pages and it lacks any, any semblance of a sophisticated a report. And like I said, I, I move to send this back for revision uh, with the recommendation that they um, seek a you know, professional writing class or just some direction that they provide a report that it's a report instead of a photographic essay of the citizens of the council. Mr. Young, if I'm um, not mistaken, um, 
these are put together and they're presented at the DDA meetings where she runs through them and offers more explanation, right? And then they're provided as a courtesy more for us to see what the DDA's report is. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It's so, the receiving file. Yeah, so I'm wondering if what you would like then would be something different, because this she puts together for the DDA board and she runs through it at the DDA meetings. So uh, I'm wondering if, you know, the motion to receive a file can stand, but then that you would make a request that council gets a little bit more detailed report from the DDA director. Uh, since this is something that she's already presented, we're just receiving it as a courtesy. But you could put in a request that says, I would like this with more explanation. Was well, this a DDA director's report to the village council of Lake Orion? It was to the board. DDA board. Okay, it says DDA executive director's report and it's on the village council agenda. So is it a report to the village council by the DDA director? It's a report from the DDA director to the DDA board and they send it to us mm. just so we can see. So would that kingdom. be uh, sufficient um, for Councilmember Mem Member Lamb to have a more detailed narrative as to what that presentation entailed to the board and have that included when we get these as opposed to receiving file? Yeah, I would like Mr. Young to um, clarify what the reporting requirements of the Downtown Development Authority are to the Village of Lake Orient Board. And that being said, we could address this at another meeting and this I can move to receive and file this under those conditions. Yeah, I agree because the um, annual report from the DDA board is very, um, it's lacking. If, it, if this is what, if the, the annual report is what we're supposed to be getting as a detailed information of what the D, what's going on with the DDA, um, that that's falling short dramatically. And then the, do we get these monthly reports? Um, these are just pictures pretty much of the, so we need to know what the reporting requirements are. So would it be fair uh, if I'm saying Mr. Lamb's motion correct that for the purpose of this evening's item we would receive and file with the provisio that uh, for further uh, Mr. Young, uh, clarify the reporting reports. requirements in, in my yeah. Okay. Comment was strictly that I would like to see a better. Okay. And that's in the form of a motion and uh, support? I'll support. Motion made, support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. Item number B. Uh, formerly item number eight, approval of Village Council regular meeting minutes, November 8th, November 8th 2021. Mr. Lamb. I move to, um, I move that we approve these minutes subject to the following corrections. Um, on packet page 65, uh, item nine, uh, resolved um, to not confirm President Portfleet's reappointment of Debbie Burgess was my motion, the part as a person with property interest in the DDA board uh, should be struck. I did not say that. That would be the first item. And this is on packet page 65? 65, 65 yes. yep, yeah. nine, uh, nine A, and it was a resolution that failed. But it, uh, I just said to not confirm President Van Portland's reappointment. Uh, the second item is, uh, this is, must be a typo because it says that we unanimously did not approve Mr. Lorant's appointment to the board, but I believe we and, uh, unanimously. Adopted, yes. Yeah, it says failed, failed unanimous. Yeah, so it should be adopted unanimous. Okay, so that correction would be correction. on packet page 66. Six. Uh, the second actual line result, it should say. Um, adopted. Adopted. And then I, I. And then Joe, you expl Okay, so that would be the two corrections I asked that you include in the motion. Are those sufficient, Mr. Yard, or do we need a motion on that? Well, well, I need a motion to. Well, I've got a motion. I see the second. I think. I did. I'm sorry, Sarah. I did. Okay. Sorry. That's Teresa. Motion and support. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay. Uh, 
The next item will be item C, which was formerly item 11, Downtown Development Authority Regular Meeting Minutes, November 12, 2021. Mr. Lamb. What page was that on, Joe? Okay, that was 86. Um, I don't think you told me. Yes. There was the... These say DDA regular minutes October 12th. There's, there's two. Oh, there's two. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So where's uh, the November 12th? That's November like. 12th is on packet page 86, and that was item 11. Well, it's got the wrong no, no, heading. The, on but it. these say October yeah. 12th. The, the numbering is messed up was one reason I, yeah, I wanted to point out the numbering on the, yeah. the okay. So we need what page is that, Joe? 11? Well, it's because it says November on the cover, but it's actually October 12th minutes. Yeah. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So we need to correct that to show. Um, I think that's why I, I'm sorry, I think that's why I included that was for that reason. <laughs> I, I didn't write it down on the cover, so please excuse me. If um, I move to accept um, and file the downtown development of the regular minute meetings November 12th, 20? It would be October. Be October, yeah. okay. So that should be October 12th. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Is there support? Support. Teresa? Okay. Sorry. Moved and supported. No. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. I said aye, I forgot. <laughs> aye. Okay, moving on to financial matters. Item one, invoice register and bill approval, Mr. Young. Yes, council, we have this evening uh, bills paid November 9th in the amount of $21,688.57 and on November 10th, the amount of $5,059.56 and invoice register dated November 18th in the amount of $78,761.48. What page does that start on, Joe? 122. Yeah, we'll get a motion and support. I move to approve the bills paid November 9th, 2021, in the amount of 21,688.57, November 10th, in the amount of $5,059.56, and November 18th, 2021, invoice register report in the amount of 78,761.48 cents. Support? Uh, I would like to discuss and then discussion well, we get support and then we'll discuss I support so, oh, okay. uh, support by lamp and discussion okay um, as, as previously discussed we were going to not uh, formally approve the downtown development authority expenses right. we're not it's not our authority and so those are going to be the motion should include if the motion should include to and to receive and file the downtown development authority expenditure report. Their bills. It's just to receive far the DDA bill report. So to prove the bills paid and to receive and file the DDA bills. Would uh, I'll re amend my motion to reflect that. Okay. Mr. Matheson will amend his motion to reflect receive and file of DDA reports. And I'm pretty positive the support would as well. I will. I will <laughs> put my support to that also. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Do you want to do a roll, or call? roll call. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Hobbs. Yes. Councilmember Lamb. Yes. Councilmember Luxinger. Yes. Councilmember Matheson. Yes. Council President Pro Tem Narsh. Yes. Councilmember Ruck. Yes. Passes unanimously on a roll call. Okay. Item passed. Uh, item two, financial reports, October 2021. Mr. Young. 
Yes, Council, we have our October 31 financial report, and I did have a couple updates for you. Uh, one, most importantly, is that uh, the census will be taking effect, we found out, uh, starting uh, in February, but will be retroactive to last October. And unfortunately, our uh, population went down by 3%. It went down from 2956 to 2987 for some reason. We don't understand why, because SEMCOG has this pet is projected to 3,189, and that's upon which we received our ARP money, American Rescue Plan money, which we aren't going to lose that. That stays. Uh, and they are, the state is trying to not make it retroactive, so, but we'll see what happens with that. But it is a, a decrease. Uh, both in our sales tax and our gas, gas and weight tax uh, in the $10,000 range. Uh, we'll know more once we get their final implementation date. Um, we did have on the, on the good side, though, our pension funds that we contribute uh, based on salary for most of our employees, that's called a defined contribution. Uh, in order to vest, you have to be here six years. Well, over the years, we've had several employees come and go that did invest, and there was this called forfeiture funds that are sitting in our account that we can now apply and use towards current year contributions. So it'll help this year's budget. Um, it's, a, it's approximately $40,000, uh, and it just affects those employees that are on the defined contribution, not the defined benefit. Uh, under the MERS program. So I wanted to mention that. The other thing is we will be getting our annual audit at the next council meeting, December 12th, council meeting. I said the 13th, but it's the 12th, uh, uh, for a presentation for the audit. So. Okay. And do you know uh, if the reason I was curious when I read this, um, that, you know, people are hesitant to... Uh, complete anything that comes to them, you know, from the federal government. And unfortunately, uh, the census is just that. It provides funds back to the village. And do we know what percent complete the village was in the last census? How many responded, do you mean? Yes. To the survey? And I can find out. And, and I say that because, you know, I, I, people need to know that Failure to answer a census harms the community. It just takes money away, right. um, and that's all it is, is a uh, tool. Obviously, it's used for different tools, but for our community, it affects us negatively. So um, I'm, I'm yeah. sad to hear that. And the uh, township received a decrease also. Right, and I'd be curious to see if I have to double check that, totally. what our uh, compliance percentage was yeah. and in how if they have a way to rectify that yeah. what we I can will check do. into that I know okay. they do follow up I'd hate to wait 10 years for a loss of funding if there's a way to to rectify that yeah. thank you um, is this a receiving file I moved to yes. receive and file financial yeah. report oh. okay. uh, so. Right, so Joe so what this says in summary is that due to the census we're going to lose uh, $17,656 every year in revenue. The other statement is uh, we're going to receive a one-time uh, refund of $45,000 from the pension funds that were not uh, used. All right. Um, is there any estimate of if any of this revenue will be recovered from the proposed Tax abatements for the new development project. Are we going to are we going to gain any income from the the new projects in the next ten years if we grant the tax abatements? Not if we abate the tax, we won't be. Okay, so if we get these new, all these new projects and want tax abatements and tax abatements, we're not going to get any revenue from them. For not the additional revenue. Yeah, correct. so we're we're going to be just keep losing money, right? In a sense, we're not getting money. We're going to still be getting on the land, but, okay. but not the building. Correct. That's what but on the land, not the building. Correct. Now, is that five years or ten years? It's up to the council. It okay. can go up to ten years. Okay. Was there a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion there to receive a, a file. The report's for October 31st. Support. Um, 
Motion and support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passed. Okay. Other items E. Playground equipment purchase with DDA funds, Mr. Young. Yes, Council, the downtown, or well, the Parks and Rec Committee uh, approached the DDA for funding of a playground equipment and the board approved it in amount of $78,210. Uh, this would be a community build. Uh, Council Member Teresa Ruck can speak more specifically to the items, but uh, tonight would be approving the contract and the funding by the DDA and the corresponding uh, budget amendment. Uh, that we can go ahead and get the equipment ordered. It will be a community build, and they are seeking additional funds for that, as well as the children a Greens Park project, as you recall, where uh, we got the T-Mobile grant for 50000 and there's going to be a cost and number of volunteers needed to help with that. We do get a supervisor on both these projects, um, but I'll turn it over to Teresa if you'd like to... Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so the Parks and Rec Committee approached the DDA. We made a presentation to the DDA back in July, just overall vision for the project, and then we got the grant from T-Mobile. Um, and so we reapproached the DDA board and asked if they would contribute to the purchasing of the playground equipment for Children's Park, largely because, I mean, it is kind of the centerpiece of downtown. It's heavily used. It's used for DDA events, and they... Um, uh, approve the purchase of the equipment for the park. So um, still associated costs that the village will end up um, having to, to take care of, like the playground safety surfacing, so bringing in more mulch, um, DPW hours as they'll be removing the old equipment and putting the new in. Um, but really exciting that they are, um, that they've agreed to fund the equipment purchase. So the total equipment purchase is $78,000. So that's a significant amount. And just really excited about um, new equipment for the kids to play in since the current equipment is deteriorating. Uh, we've also been looking, um, the Parks Committee and Mr. Young put it out for bid for the pavilion for Greens Park. Um, we're still looking at some of the numbers and the options for that. So that will probably be something that comes up um, soon as well. Um, so the Parks Committee has some money allocated towards that, but tonight we're asking you to, yeah, approve the purchase um, with the DDA funds for the equipment for Children's Park. That's uh, actually really excellent news. I mean, our parks have, uh, just in the last year, uh, with the additional funding and the work of the Parks Committee has just been phenomenal. Yes. Um, they've needed an, a, a lot of love, a lot of funding, a lot of care. Um, there's always been really good design and intent, but the funding for our parks is just so low. And uh, this help from the DDA, I think it's valid, it's infrastructure, and it allows us to seek funding from other groups uh, for other projects in the village by reaching out to the DDA. And I think it was a perfect move, and uh, I think it's great for the parks. I'm looking forward to the improvement. I, I had one question, though. I, I've talked to a couple of people. And when I was, I was down at Children's Park about a week ago, and I had a couple of people ask me, uh, there's a lot of um, play parks are moving towards the rubber matting as opposed to uh, the chips. I think it's less that the DPW would have to worry about with mowing and snow and things. Is that something? So it is on our radar. Um, and to be honest, the first place we'd put that is probably Greens Park because we're looking at sand surfacing right now with the beach and everything, but sand is not an ADA accessible playground surfacing. So the pour and play rubber surfacing is about $25 a square foot. So we're looking for Greens Park somewhere. The first, I've gotten one quote and it was around $40,000 for Greens Park for the playground there to do safety surfacing. So Children's Park is a bigger park. It's gonna be a lot more than that. Uh, the nice thing, so the rubber mulch that we have or wood chips, you know, the engineer wood fiber, both of them are ADA um, surfacing, so it is ADA acceptable, um, lower end of the ADA approved. Um, so it's something we would love to do, you know, there's that small patch at the bottom of the red slide, um, but it's quite costly to do so. So for now, uh, like I said, the first priority to do pour and place rubber surfacing would be over at Greens Park, um, and then after that, you know, it's something we'd love to do, but. Well, good, yeah, and that was the comment, it's uh, more of a safety uh, surface uh, right. for children, so I'm glad that the parks are looking at that. Um, I'm hearing comments about it as well. So, any other discussion? Looking for a uh, motion? As, as we, oh. I think we're supposed to have a motion before discussion, but since we're having discussion for motion, may I have some discussion? 
Or do we want to make a motion and then have discussion? I think uh, Councilmember Rupp was actually yeah. delivering the, uh, yeah. the message. I can make a motion real quick if you want. Yeah, because I just have okay. a couple of comments. And it's a, okay. Yeah, so I'll move to approve the purchase of playground equipment from Pensure Landscape Structures in the amount not to exceed $78,000. $7.71 is requested by the Parks and Rec Board and funded by the DDA Board to approve the community build supervision from Pensure not to exceed $2,000 and authorize the village manager to sign the contract subject to review by the village attorney and further resolve to approve the budget amendment as presented to be incorporated in the minutes and finally resolve to express thanks to the DDA board for the $78,210 funds for the Children's Park improvements. Support. Been moved and supported. Uh, discussion. I would like to say, I, uh, I'd like to say um, it's about time the DDA coughed up some of the money, uh, especially since they've been collecting uh, tax dollars from the residential portions of their district that haven't benefited at all from the DDA since 1985. So I, I would consider just a, a tiny installment um, to our community uh, from the Downtown Development Authority uh, for their excessive uh, captured district. Um, yeah, I think it's great. I, I, I'm going to continue to pressure the DDA to cough up some more money and, and um, I think Mr. Young is getting ready to present them with a very large bill soon. Yes. Yes, and so uh, it's exciting to see some of that DDA money come back. Any other comments, discussion? Uh, does this be a roll call? Councilmember Lamb. Yes. Councilmember Luxinger. Yes. Councilmember Matheson. Yes. Con President Pro Tem Narsh. Yes. Councilmember Rutt. Yes. Councilmember Hobbs. Yes. Thank you. And item E number two, Parks and Recreation Master Plan Update Proposal, Mr. Young. Yes, Council, we have an update, a five-year update due on our Parks and Rec Master Plan. Uh, it expires in February. And uh, part of the process is, of course, updating it for any uh, changes that uh, we'd like to have the plan be considered. Uh, I know Councilmember uh, Rudd has reviewed it, and Council uh, President Brad Porfield is reviewing it for comments, and look, welcome anyone's comments. There will be a 30-day public comment period, which will start this week and go through uh, January to be ready for a uh, public hearing and, a he and um, adoption of the plan in uh, January. Uh, the co in order to help us put this project, this report so together, we hired, um, proposing a hire uh, McKenna and Associates who drafted the last contract uh, for us five years ago. Their proposal is a fee to not exceed $9,700. The biggest component we need from them is the demographics information and some of the charts and tables that might be need to be updated. So tonight I'm just asking your approval to uh, enter the contact with McKenna and Mountain Nuts exceed $9,700, subject to review by the village attorney. We do have this money in our budget. So. Look for a motion. And, and we need the grant in order to be able for most state and federal grants requires to have a current Parks and Rec Master Plan. And this is a five-year requirement, and yes. we're at that point. Yes. So it's required. So I'd be looking for a motion. Move to approve the Parks and Recreation Master Plan update proposal from McKenna in the amount not to exceed $9,700 and authorize the village manager to sign the contract subject to review by the village attorney. Support. Discussion. Mr. Lamb. As always. <laughs> um, do we have any requirements to bid these services out for this level I, project? I, I did get a bid of $19,500 from Beckett Raider. Um, Gifflis and Webster did not want to bid, did not bid. So there, there were limited a number of bids I got, and the one was... So my question was, are we required to bid this out? It's a professional service. You don't have to, but we do. We do go get and solicit proposals. Okay, so you're representing that you solicited proposals, yes. and this was the cheapest one, right. and it just so happened to right. be our existing planner who did the yeah. last report. And I'm hoping to come in significantly less than that based on our input and involvement with this project. 
Yeah, I would say I've already gone through, marked it up, and sent it to Manager Young too to, with what's been completed or will be completed on the current one, things that the Parks and Rec Committee has discussed. I know um, uh, Council President Van Port has also done that. So if you guys have comments on that, you can send them to me and Mr. Young, and we'll make sure to um, get that. So yeah, I just went through and marked up the whole plan. Sure. And <laughs> Hopefully that will help expedite some up, right. make it a little bit easier for McKenna right. to and, make some of the updates as well. And the main thing is the plan needs to contain the items we would like to see in the future. <laughs> so that's the main reason for having it. So yeah, when the grants a number, come forward. Yeah. As I say, a number of the grants, like the one that comes, came out from Oakland County that's due in January, uh, if you're applying for a grant from them, that the item that you're requesting or what you're requesting funds for has to be in your current master plan. Right. So you can't just oh, hey, I'm going to dream up something else and request that. Right. So items that you're right. requesting, especially like federal or state grants, have to be in your right. master plan. Like, like, the, uh, like a lighted waterfall in the park would not be eligible unless it was listed in the report, for example. And as you stated earlier, um, based on some of the work of Council Member Rutt and the committee, the Parks Committee, that there may, it actually may come in under Ninety-seven hundred dollars. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I, I just will point out one more thing if, with the selection of McKenna. They have a tendency to be verbose. Uh, they pad their reports with excessive amounts of photographs and white space, and so I find the documents difficult to read and difficult to understand. And so previously in the past, we've asked them to make corrections to this approach because they should be read. Someone should read them, not just look at the picture. And I believe Mr. Young is making notes to that effect. Yes. Okay, we have a motion. We have support. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Luxinger? Yes. Matheson? Yes. Narsh? Yes. Rutt? Yes. Hobbs? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Motion passed. Yes. Item E3, retaining wall replacement Park Avenue, Mr. Young. Yes, Council, uh, at the end of Park Avenue, we have a retaining wall, wood rafter retaining wall that uh, has been brought to our attention is uh, leaking in between the rafters because the storm drainage system is not functioning like it should. And uh, we've had uh, contractors come out and look at it and get us pricing, but because of the uh, layout of it, you need to do an engineered study to make sure what we're proposing will meet the engineering standards rather than just replace a wooden wall that's deteriorating. We need to make sure uh, what's necessary from a geotechnical standpoint with some soil borings and also the drainage. So we're asking this evening to, for the uh, engineering contract with Nowak and Fraus and the amount not to exceed $12,950 for that engineering work, which we could then, from that, go out and get bids that would meet the uh, necessary standards. We did solicit proposals. There's um, copies in the, in the bid in here. Uh, we, as I said, we did get quotes from contractors, but after looking at it closer, we determined that we just couldn't remove the wall and put it back. We needed more in-depth in civil engineering, particularly with the drainage, because uh, the video, I don't know if you saw the video, but the water is draining through the, law, uh, the boards when it shouldn't be doing that, which, and it was deteriorating on the ends, so it definitely needs to be replaced. It was, my understanding, it was put in years ago, the village participated along with the property owners, was what I was told. But, um, and there is a cost sharing. The property owner uh, to the west said, I would like to replace my driveway, and as part of this, I will pay for that. And we will be putting together an agreement to that effect uh, to bring back to council uh, to that point once we get the plans and uh, specifications put together. So, would it be fair to say that the total? project estimate is probably going to be different than 50,000 because that was based on the wall replacement, not based on the findings of the engineering study that we haven't completed yet. Right. Well, that 50 included at the 12,000. Right. But if the, engines, if the engineering findings come back that we have to make additional changes, that would change. Could, we would oh, have yes. to rebid 
Oh, right. The scope right. of work. Yeah. Right. Well, we're going to rebid no matter how because. Okay. Because the, the firms would put the wall in, but they wouldn't do the restoration, for example. Right. But <laughs> so we don't we don't want to have who did what. I guess what I'm have. getting at is, should we have a total project estimate of fifty thousand dollars if we don't know what the total project estimate at this time is? Well, I had three bids on the walls. Was that just the wall replacement? Yeah, just the wall, not restoration of the pavement. Okay, but if the and engineering under, study that we're paying for in this motion comes back and says we have to make additional changes, we would have to have an additional motion if it right. was beyond well, the 50000 yeah, This This motion, it was just to award the contract. I know I can frost to design the wall to go out to bed. Okay. A motion is just for twelve thousand one fifty. They're going to. They're they're on the gonna back of page two forty two. They're oh. going to prepare the scope of work, Joe, and you're you're going to then send that out for bids. Correct. And then we'll receive the bids. Correct. And all the apples and oranges on each bid sheet will look the same. Yes. That would be good. That's the goal. Yes. Okay. Uh, looking for a motion. Uh, can I ask one more question, Joe? So. I think Jerry's question was the total project estimate of local street. Did you create the? Did you come up with the fifty thousand dollar number? Well, based on the twelve plus the bids we got. Okay, so you, this you is just a ballpark. That's your ballpark. Yeah. Village manager's ballpark right. estimate. Yeah. Nothing formal. Just, no, 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 no. Just to put us in a okay. Yeah, just to give you some magnitude of the under a hundred. Okay. I'll move to approve the design engineering contract, um, the Park Avenue retaining wall replacement to Noah and Frouse engineers in amount not to exceed 12150 and authorize the village manager to sign the contract subject to review by the village attorney. Support. Motion and support. Roll call. I, I'm, any further discussion? Roll call, Mr. Matheson? Yes. Narsh? Yes. Rod? Yes. Hobbs? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Luxinger? Yes. Thank you. Motion passed. Item 10, call to the public. Mr. Newell, you're it. <laughs> uh, if uh, anyone has, no? We'll close call to the they public. Have, they have new offices now. So uh, I just wanted to comment um, that um, I want everyone to be cautious with the COVID. We have uh, had an employee today um, come down with it, unfortunately, but he's um, now he's being uh, cared for and didn't expose us. He wasn't around, and we sanitized everything, including this room. Um, so be sensitive out there to that. Uh, we are down to a, a low crew on the DPW, so. Uh, if it snows, which is supposed to be starting at the, right now, I believe, we'll have to figure out where we can call upon some people or contractors to help us, depending on how much we get. Because right now, Wes can come in and drive, but he can't. Um, some of healthy enough. Um, the one other um, employee is recovering from surgery, so... The, um, um, the ones that I, has a family that's out on COVID. Your they? comment about Wes coming in to drive... I would run that by the attorney because there might be some liability issues if he came into work with COVID. Right. right. And Chris, I, I wouldn't recommend that for a lot of reasons. Oh, One, the vehicle is now contaminated. It'd have to be decontaminated oh, yeah. right. before he could use again. If he had to stop for fuel, if there was any public, I, I think yeah. it best. No, I there, there would be liability, and the village would be responsible for that. that. We tell him to stay home if we it's required. If we look at an emergency contractor that. Right. That we do. I think that's totally within the purview of the manager to. Right. Um, the, 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 only, the other thing I wanted to mention was that I didn't realize that even though this is a remake of a re regular meeting, it's a special meeting, and we can't add items in a special meeting. Because I was going to add the bids for the uh, asphalt and paving. Because um, some of them still could do the work this year, some have their own asphalt plants. Um, and some did say they would hold the bids for next year. So I could, we could either wait till December, the next council meeting, or consider having a special council meeting. Uh, can it you, wait till the next council meeting, or it, is it, it? It can. It's just that the sooner we get it approved, the sooner they can do whatever the weather will allow them now. Can we so, have a one item meeting? Pardon? Can we have a one agenda item meeting? Yes. 
The con Joe's concern is that the, this time of year the asphalt plants are closing, and you know, last minute, Charlie, we have um, three streets that have issues that should be the snow plows are going to destroy the streets completely if they don't patch them, and then. They had a lot of man poles that are sticking up that are gonna get nailed by the snow plows. Why this wasn't taken care of this summer, um, I don't know. Okay. But it, um, is it gonna be a big impact to us, Joe, if we don't do this work this year? No, it's not gonna impact if is we don't use it. Is it gonna inconvenience me as a, as a resident driving down my street, which is one of the three streets that yeah. is horribly degraded that yeah. they didn't repair this uh, summer? And the bids for paving, some of them were good for next year. Are they still able to pave this year? They could. It's my understanding the pavement plants have all closed. No, but one firm has his own plant and said that he, they could make asphalt through the year. Which Is it advisable to put asphalt down this time of year? Well, they, one firm has what they call this infrared treatment where they heat the asphalt up and it sticks and holds together well. So it is, it is an option. Do we still have the ability of our DPW to do patch? Yeah, we have the hot box and do we do do potholes. Are, but are these we, are the magnitude. These that, are beyond there. These are beyond. I mean, there's 60 of them and they're three by three. You got a saw cut, then you got to dig them up, and then you got to put them back on. And right cool? now, our, our staff is not able to do that because we're. We don't have any information, Joe. What was the dollar amount you were looking for for this? Well, I, I want to be careful because it's not an agenda item, uh, yeah, no, yeah, and we can't add to the meeting. Yeah, we don't need um, to deliberate. Okay. Just what but they... what, what we should do is consider, um, if we want to do it at this time, a motion to uh, have a special meeting, and we could do that. And uh, I would uh, offer this alternative. And I know it's not a popular one, and it's not one that I'm particularly uh, in favor of. However, COVID is increasing. Um, we're seeing it, uh, the, the numbers are rapidly increasing uh, everywhere. And I'm going to suggest that we um, look at the December meeting. We only have one meeting in December. And we have, uh, if this special meeting, that we do that uh, in a Zoom format. Um, it may make it easier on some other members for um, an emergency meeting, but I, I want to consider that for the next meeting. And I'm basing that on some phone calls to Homeland Security uh, today, uh, an official uh, in the fire capacity with Homeland Security. And the numbers are rising. We just, we see that today. It's within our own community and it's um, uh, kind of alarming, uh, the rapid increase in numbers. So. Uh, I think out of an overabundance of caution for the community um, that we consider the December meeting to be um, a Zoom format and perhaps in a, this meeting, the next meeting. Well, I, I would support uh, going to just having a special one item meeting with Zoom because we have a few COVID cases around the village and the staff. Um, the December meeting, I'm not ready to go back to the, to the isolation. Or the closure. I, I would appreciate Zoom meetings, especially in my condition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I, I and I'm with you, Mr. Lamb. I, I don't like them either. I like being here and I like talking to the public. And I know Joe's going to make some comments on that as well, uh, Manager Young. We have until December 31st, as uh, the governor has not uh, amended that order. So beyond December 31st um, is the end of uh, digital or Zoom uh, meetings. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll go ahead, Mr. Young. And well, we did look into that, and there is a, it would require a state law amendment. The governor can't do it. It has to come from the Senate or the House, and there is a bill to extend it to March 31st, but there's only one person supporting it, and that's been out there. But the other thing with a, a Zoom meeting, or doing, even doing a hybrid, you have to declare a state of emergency. Which, which, if you remember, the council president did that. And then you can do it under the law. So we would need to declare a state of emergency. And we could do hybrid meetings where if you wanted to come in person or Zoom, they, and Ian's can, can make it, try to make it work as best as possible. We, we hesitated doing it previously because it's, you know, 
keep a track of everything, but if it be for one or two meetings, uh, or well, depending on how things go, we may want to go that way. But Ian's said today he would work with me to figure out a better streamlined way to do it. But we would need a, a declaration of state of emergency. And, and that's easily done, and I think it, it would be done. Um, we could do that at the special meeting. Well, that's example. but but the special meeting would have to be in person to designate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I I, let, I would like to propose that we prepare a state of emergency declaration that would be uh, in place until December 31st. And the hybrid meeting, I, I would ask that you look into developing the hybrid meeting. Clearly, we're not going to be able to do that for the next meeting. It's a little more involved, but in the event over the next three months that becomes a tool we can use. I think we, we need to have that available if we pull it. Well, we need to get that law amended to allow that. And, and that's another thing as well. And I, I, I honestly believe that um, uh, in Lansing, they're going to take a look at these numbers. Uh, the county homeland security agencies are collecting the data and it's, um, uh, it's increasing to the point where it's, uh, I think, going to Right. Uh, become very important. Yeah. So we, uh, the uh, Michigan Misbelief has their MML live every other week, and that was one of the top items that they did discuss trying to get that moving uh, along with the short-term rental item, which uh, there's. They said it could go out so at any time, but they did. There was a, somebody said there was a. We're kind of wandering off the subject yeah. well, of the meeting, so I, I think. Well, we'll talk about this. What, I, what I'd like to do is get a date for the special meeting. Sure. Yeah. yeah great. That'd be wonderful. Like if we can week, look at a date, and then uh, we need 18 hours notice. So. I'm available every day this week for one hour after. What time do you guys all get home? Anytime after six. So Anytime Wednesday after would be six. All right. Would Wednesday work? Wednesday, December first. At six p.m. or six fifteen, or that would work for me. Six fifteen would be great. Six fifteen. That we said, sir. Yes. Oh, okay. So Wednesday at six fifteen, special meeting for consideration of the uh, asphalt paving contract? Anything else you want to add? And the and declaration. The state of emergency. Declarations, if, Two items. If that could be drafted and prepared. Yes, we will. Meeting. And could you bring a, something in with uh, like a plan for a hybrid? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Those, we'll bring, those three I, items will be on the agenda. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I, just to be straight, I don't really support any declarations of states of emergencies until an emergency exists. And um, just because someone thinks we need to have an emergency, okay? So is it appropriate that we're going to have a special meeting for asphalt? Yeah, you can for whatever you want. I mean, so right I now, mean, I, there's some council members who would prefer not to meet in person. To asphalt meeting. Well, we're talking... Wednesday. Wednesday. Day after tomorrow. Yeah, at 6.15. And I, and I think dude, then we can have it as an agenda item and a full discussion. And the council's got to vote on it. they got to I mean, vote. And, and whether we go to the uh, state of emergency, they can declare the state of emergency, but whether right. we go to uh, the, the Zoom and digital format would be a council decision on Wednesday. Yeah, I just don't know what the impetus for having a state of emergency is. The well, state of emergency is in order to the state of emergency is required. Yeah, that's the state of emergency is required by state law. You cannot go to a digital meeting without a local state of emergency what, what I'm saying is I I I'm not really that fond of the Zoom meeting, especially with these developers making presentations, some very serious issues with the DDA and the local development. Uh, I would like to be able to face these people and speak to them directly. So uh, as far as the safety of, of the members of the team, I'm 100% behind all of you, but I have some deep concerns right now with, the, you know, what I see a crisis with our DDA and with these, de these five development projects we're going to run wild through our community. I don't want to do this stuff remotely if we don't have to. So. Well, and I think that's a part of the discussion we can have on Wednesday for the, especially the um, hybrid. So, Yes. I would be open yes. to I having agree. an agenda item as a discussion of a right. possible, but, but not necessarily as, as having uh, a vote on it at that point. Um, 
Well, I, I think it'll come to a vote, but we can discuss that on Wednesday. Yeah, it's an agenda item, whether you want to vote it on or up. And or down. with that, let's move to council comments. Mr. Lamb. Oh, do we have a motion to set the. Do we need a motion to. We gave to, me direction to. If you want yeah, we to gave him direction. I don't think we need a. We don't need a motion for a special Not meeting. Unless you want one. I don't okay, believe I don't, we do. Um, I mean, if you want to do a motion just for the record, we can. Okay. Uh, looking for a motion to set a special meeting. On Wednesday, December 1st at 6.30 p.m. 6.15. Or 6.15. Yeah. 6.15 p.m. Uh, live. So, right. So, for the three items discussed. For the, the three items. Consideration which, of asphalt contract award, declaring a state of emergency, and hybrid meeting options. Hybrid meeting options. This discussion of declaring a state of emergency. I'm sorry? Discussion of declaring a state of emergency. Well, it's on the agenda for discussion. You decide whether you want to do it or not. Because there's only one meeting that will apply to right now. <laughs> That's it? The December meeting. So we have a motion. Brad, and second. Jerry, you want to second? Sport, sport. Jerry. Do you want a roll call? Or? Uh, sure, we'll do roll call. Narsh. Yes. Rutt. Yes. Hobbs. No. Okay. Lamb. No. Luxinger. Yes. Matheson. Yes. Motion passes four to two. Six fifteen in person. Wednesday, December first, and you'll get the notices out. Yes, tomorrow. Um, okay. All right, council. Okay, moving on. Council comments, Mr. Lamb. Um, if council member Luxinger's uh, concerned, I would be willing to wear a mask at the meeting. If uh, things are being, I would wear a mask and follow protocol and separate a little bit, if that would would help. Uh, my comments tonight are at the last DDA meeting I made an informal presentation to them where I informed them that I believe that their, uh, their, uh, their TIF um, does not conform with their plan and that they've been you know, illegally capturing revenues from the uh, citizens of our fair community since 1985 um, and that the funds you know, aren't being distributed appropriately and I asked them to uh, amend their district in order that they could conform with state law. Um, that would be the first of my, I, could, I should probably send you a copy of that presentation. It wasn't included in the minutes of the DDA meeting and I, that's what I wanted to say that I had forgotten to annotate and say. So I'll probably be forwarding to you a, a copy of that presentation Yes, we're very informal, and I and I wrote down my notes in a memorandum form, not to um, a speech, like so. It was kind of rough. Um, I still continue to, as I watch the DDA report and prosper. I think it's wonderful that we have a community-based organization that's going to help perpetuate our community. I do not think it's the purpose of my tax dollars to promote a party operation that their primary function is to throw parties and they increase every year. There were 10 or 12 parties this year and they're mostly alcoholic parties which I, I drink alcohol and, um, and you know they're hiring staff support staff so they can have help throwing their party. I think that the decrease in the DDA's district is not going to come from the DDA. I don't think that most of the DDA members actually understand their function or what their job is or what their duties are. I think this has all grown since 1985 in a very, very small community with a disproportionate DDA district. So I, I would just like to make you aware this is, this is what I'm working on and I'm gonna to continue to hammer the DDA until fiscal responsibility and appropriate guidance under the state law occurs. The, um, my other concern with them was the, uh, Joe, what's the name of that, that program that I keep taking shots at? I didn't bring my notes. The, the tax abatement? No, the, uh, the, the PUD? The what? The PUD, Planning Development. 
Oh, no. No, the, the Main National Street. Trust, the Main Street National Trust. Yeah, the Main Street, you know, there seems to be some mystery. The, the Main Street America program is not a federal legal law that is doing so. It is a independent, nonprofit, political organization designed to bring all the Main Streets together for whatever purpose it. Accreditation through them, acceptance and awards and such not, are strictly along the lines of teacher of the year, okay? They are not operating underneath any of our state laws. So all the stuff they come up with is just fun, frilly stuff. These are my comments. Um, the last comment of the night has to do with the tax abatements. And this is a kind of a rude comment, and I was going to make it earlier during the presentation, but I unfortunately have to wait till now to, to give it to you. I don't understand how a brownfield development authority can be established to take a piece of property where the owners of the property have spent the last 70 years making it worthless by contaminating it and degrading it and not maintaining it to the point where it, it's almost worthless. For instance, the Lumberyard property has a current SEV of $350,000. This property is supposedly, according to the developer's presentation, so the planning commission is seriously, horribly contaminated. But somehow, this contaminated, horribly property is worth $2.5 million to be sold to the developer. So the people that contaminated the property, I've got nothing against their wonderful people. I'm just, this is a situation that exists throughout our community, also at the Eamon Center project. Why, as a taxpayer or as a fiscally responsive elected government official, I would recommend a tax abatement and funding the paying of $2.5 million to people for property they, they contaminated? I don't get it. And I don't understand it. And the Eman Center, we also, this is not going to be popular for me. The Eman Center, we also have a similar situation. I've been studying this stuff for almost a year. $50,000 is the number that the different people have paid. First, the property went back to the state, someone bought it for 50, another guy bought it for 50. So now we have a company, a very nice company, that wants to develop the property. It's got problems, it's got asbestos, it needs abatement. Oh my goodness, the guy that paid $50,000 for the property. He's going to get $1.2 million for this worthless piece of property that nobody wants to develop. And who's going to pay for the property? Tax abatement? Our tax dollar? We're supposed to pay this guy $1.2 million for the property that no one wanted to develop? Why doesn't he just give it to the people? And then the people can use that $1.2 million to abate the issues. This is a serious problem, guys. And it's really troubling me. I do not believe this is what the brownfield development laws are all about. I think they're supposed to be taking factory sites that have been abandoned and worthless and taken over by the communities, and then the communities are supposed to take this property, encourage a developer to take the property by using their tax dollars. This is not a funding mechanism to make land developers wealthy. I happen to be a land developer, and I would love to be able to buy a swamp and sell it for a million dollars. And I'm troubled deeply troubled, and I think you should all be troubled, too. So thank you for letting me speak once again. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Lesser. Um, couple of things. What's, because uh, we brought up um, the retaining wall replacement on Park Avenue. Uh, Manager Young, what's going on with the Bridge Street um, retaining wall and Bellevue, the were they going to put a railing up? Guardrail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Bridge Street project, the contractors in the process, of, and hopefully has ordered the steel. Uh, the property owners have signed off on their responsibilities, and we're waiting uh, for Fontana to tell us when the steel come in and when it's going to be installed. He said it would be between November and March, and that's where we're at at the moment. Last time I talked to him, uh, he was uh, said that he's in contact with the steel manufacturer on that one. 
on the um, Bellevue. Uh, uh, the Bellevue guardrail. That contract is, is being executed. They are planning to schedule us hopefully within the next two weeks to get it in. Okay. So, so and, that's moving and then, forward. Uh, I know Wes is not is uh, out of commission for a while, but right. um, I have some concerns regarding the leaf pickup. Uh, yes. The first time it was canceled, uh, specifically on uh, in our area of Lake Orion, it was canceled the first time it was supposed to come out, and it was never rescheduled. And then um, because of the snow and everything, it looks like it's not going to, the second time, yeah. it's not going to come out. Yeah. Well, they're coming back out. As, as you, soon as you, the, you, I talked to Wes today before he left um, that if, if the snow melts, they can go out with the blower and get it. If not, they'll take the front end loader and scrape them up. Okay. Okay. So he does have a plan. And when's that going to happen? Well, when he gets enough crew members there and other projects. Right now we're short of staff. But, okay. But and it, it's weather dependent right now. Okay. And I mean, we're, we're supposedly going to get one or two inches tonight, I believe. But they're, they, because I... I'm getting the second-hand information, so I might, it might not be correct, but I believe the um, bag leaf pickup is done this, this December week. 1st. Yeah. It's so, if, so there will be leaf pickup by our DPW, yes. whether it's scraping it up or right. sucking it yes. up with the, yeah. okay. And, in, and if they do have bag leaves, they can take them to the cemetery. Right, but... I'm asking if our DPW is going to be handling the situation or if our residents need to take care of it themselves. I'll ask them about the bag leaves, because right now we just deal with the ones on the curb, but I'll ask about But my understanding, what you just said is the DPW will be either coming around and picking up leaves on via the the, their hose yeah. or scraping yeah, them. Yeah, I'll double check on the bags to make sure. No, no, I, hold on, Jeff. You're saying that the DPW is going to come around and pick up the leaves. Yes. One way or another, one of those two ways. Yes. Okay. Right. And then after that, if there are more leaves, we'll be, they'll be, uh, the residents will be able to take their bags to the cemetery. Yes. Okay. Yes. But they're, they're, the, the DPW is the, going to take care of the leaves first. Yeah. Okay. Right. We're going to get the roads cleared first. Okay. And, and they might pick them up as they go along. I don't know. I'll find out. Okay. Anything else? That's all. Okay. Councilmember Rutt. Yeah, my apologies for being late tonight. I was playing a game with my son, and, you know, 6.30 instead of 7.30 is just in my mind, and I was like, oh, I guess I need to be there. So... Um, um, you said that Wes was, had planned to have interviews with some a seasonal We're still worker. Have them. Are these going to do those over Zoom, or are you going to do them? I'm doing okay, them. so those are still going to happen. So yes. there's a possibility we might get some other yes. uh, seasonal help and, in the next. Right, and we'll look at contract employees if we can find them. Okay, um, the mix. Open. The Meeks Park Bridge, probably not getting done this year. Are we still waiting on engineering drawings? The, the Meeks Park Bridge? Yes, I know I can process in the process. I'll get an update from them where okay. they're at. Yes. Um, I think that's all I have. Those two questions. That's it. Thank you. Councilmember Mathis. I've got nothing tonight. Thank you. Councilmember Hopp. Well, back to the leaves. I just say, let's burn them. I'm sorry. We need you to. Let's burn the leaves. I'm sorry again. Let's go back to burning the leaves. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're, not, they're not getting picked up enough. You know, and the, the season on picking them up is just too short. And my tree sheds them oh, right I know. now. Well, we're going to, off the record, we're going to continue to pick up as long as we're able. Okay? Mother Nature, we can't predict, just like the snow, you know? Oak, oak trees don't give off their leaves till around the end of November. My, I know. I just fell off. Yeah. 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 I, know. So. I know. Yeah. So we work with it. Because we don't want the leaves out there all winter either. Okay, and we're still going to pursue that. I mean, clearly we're short-staffed, but we're still yeah. going to be able to yes. pursue that. Yes. Okay, yes. good. I think Councilmember Rutt. Is, if I can have one more comment. Sure. Just reiterating thanks to the DDA for the playground stuff and to um, 
We're going to need lots of help in the spring to build two playgrounds. So it'll probably be over my guess over two weekends. So, you know, do a few winter workouts, I guess, inside your basement, your living room, get ready, you know, because we're gonna need a lot of people to um, help make these playgrounds a reality. And you'll be hearing more about that as springtime comes and the weather thaws and we get everything prepared. So, and to, to bear with us in the spring when things look like a mess initially at some of the parks when we are getting geared up to make some improvements. Mr. Young, when we get that date from Parks and Rec, when we know those dates, um, can you please have that put up on our website? Which dates again? No, I'm sorry. These, they're yet to be determined dates. Oh, the build days. Community build, oh, of course. When we have those dates, as soon as we get those dates, oh, yes. we can put them up and uh, right. we'll kind of push those and try to get as Definitely. community support. Um, and I think it's a great way to Right. To put it together, I got a couple of those power drivers and I, I got a couple of boys I can drag out. So good. Um, but the more support we can get, uh, yes. the better. We we'll get the work gloves on and save some tax dollars. And yes. thank you. Um, my comments tonight are just um, I, I would like to consider if you could have a conversation with Wes, maybe you already have, um, if he could zoom into those interviews. Yeah. I, th I think yeah. Wes would like to be a part of that. Oh, yeah. We will. Um, might as well be Max Headroom well. is the best kind of, you know, a little two-dimensional. Right. But I think he'd no, like fine. to be a part of that interview. Um, and then I encourage everybody, the parade oh, yeah. of the year is about to happen. Uh, the parade committee has done a phenomenal job year after year. Um, I have been blessed to be in 38 of those parades and a part of those. Uh, this is going to be my first parade that I have not participated in in 39 years. So uh, I'm going to watch the parade with everyone else and I hope everybody comes downtown. Um, it's such a wonderful time. Um, take precautions as folks, you know, see fit uh, and be cautious and be careful. Um, but uh, come downtown to the largest Midwest lighted parade and uh, they do a phenomenal job. The theme this year is Christmas in Toyland. And so you'll see floats uh, decorated to that effect. So kudos to the parade committee who for as long as I think anybody can remember, there's been a parade downtown. They do a, a better job every year. So kudos to them. Um, that's all I have. Well, and Santa Claus will be here right after, right? Santa Claus will be here. He will be here in Village Hall. There will be photographs. Uh, we encourage children and families to come. Uh, photographs with the kids. Uh, there will be some uh, items for the kids as well as cookies, hot chocolate, and that's immediately following the parade uh, at Village Hall. So everyone is invited to come and warm up and have some hot chocolate and greet Santa. And uh, those are the only comments I have. Uh, Mr. Young, do you have manager comments? Let me see what the message is. Nope, I'm good. We got horse wagon rides this Friday, and then next week, Friday and Saturday. We won't have them Saturday during the parade, although I think they might be in the parade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and again, that's at 6 p.m., the parade, 6 yeah. p.m. Right. Downtown, so. Saturday the 4th. Okay. And uh, that concludes everything. We look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved in support. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.